First off, I messed up the last move on the last video of the flying like a plane. In order to fly like a plane, you'll be turning one direction and then you roll the opposite direction, then yaw the opposite direction. And in that motion where you roll the opposite direction, you are still holding the yaw towards the direction you were previously traveling and it will it's now cross-coordinated and it will rotate the craft around the axis of the camera and then you turn the yaw the opposite direction to actually turn the opposite direction. So again, you're turning one direction, first roll, then yaw, and then roll, then yaw, then roll, then yaw, and then this just becomes natural with your finger movements if, if you plan to fly like that. I've moved locations, so instead of having dogs barking, we have cars driving by now. The last video I made was a video that I had been thinking about for a long time and I've wanted to make for a long time and I even think that it was insightful myself because I think it's things that people don't even realize they're doing. Very experienced pilots do all those things and they don't even realize they're doing it. <clears throat> this video is going to be about dives and it is not going to be nearly as insightful. I honestly don't even have any other direction to go in for how-to videos or any kind of an insight because I'm, I'm just trying to understand what I do myself because it all just becomes so natural. If you have any recommendations or any uh, questions or any suggestions as to which kind of moves you would like me to try and cover, please, please put them in the comments below. <clears throat> so what you're looking at here is this bottle, which is representing the tree or the building or whatever I'm diving, and then this marker sticking out of the bottle, which represents the canopy of the tree that I will dive under. <clears throat> this pencil represents the quad, and the cap sticking out of the pencil represents the camera angle of the quad, which is 40 degrees or whatever, whatever we typically, we, around what we typically fly at. <clears throat> so I'm basically going to dissect the dive into all of its various parts and discuss each, each aspect of it and then the various options you have for executing each particular aspect of the dive. So first and foremost, what is a dive? A dive, I would argue, is nothing more than a glorified split S. If you practice your split S's, it will probably help you with diving as well. <clears throat> so a lot of this is going to look or sound like a split S because it actually is just a split S. But again, they're the same thing. A dive and a split S is the same thing. Dive is just an exaggerated split S. So let's look, take a look at our quad and dissect the dive into all of its various components. <clears throat> so you have the acceleration up to the top or straight up to the top or whatever. However you get to the top, you have to get to the top. And then you have the initiation of the entrance. And the initiation of the entrance, you initiate the entrance. And then you have the actual initiation of the dive, which is the falling part. And then at the end of the falling part, you have the exit of the dive, which is going under the canopy or however you plan to exit. <coughs> so let's look at each of these components. First and foremost, there's a link in the description showing my original video about yaw movements and the cross-coordinated uh, rolls. That is a very important skill. I honestly think it's one of the most important skills to have and nail down and have to be able to do it, you know, always and just have it ingrained in your fingers. And what the cross-coordinated roll is, is not rolling like, okay, so you're flying forward like this. And if you do a roll, you're looking down at the ground. A cross-coordinated roll is when you roll with the camera centered. So you are, once you're upside down, you are <clears throat> pointing in the direction of travel, movement, floating, whatever. So I'm going to be talking about that a lot. We're accelerating up to the top of the tree, the top of the building, or whatever, and we have two main, I mean, you can make them fancy, but two main entrances, I would say. You, you can, you know, mix them up and however you like, but main entrances are going to be the just roll, which you're going up, going up, going up, and you just roll, and that, that has you looking down at the ground, and then you can do a half-coordinated roll, or a cross-coordinated half-roll, and that has you looking in the direction of travel. I personally would argue that the half cross-coordinated roll is a much more pretty entrance to this move, but <clears throat> depending on what kind of look you want to get, it's up to you. So you somehow enter this diving move, and then you have two ways to initiate, well, 
two main ways to initiate the actual dive. Way one, which is what most people do or most new pilots do, is they just rock it up to the top of the building or top of the tree or whatever, flip upside down, and then blast the throttle to stop moving backwards and then start falling, which is a relatively easy way to initiate the dive. The more difficult way to way to initiate the dive is to rock it up the side of the building, cut the throttle as you're soaring up, let it automatically crest over based on where you cut the throttle, crest over the top. Based on your trajectory, you can either crest too far or you could crest all the way up, float to the top, and then it just starts falling straight down, which is the best way. It's a nice, nice parabola, nice parabolic with a sharp, sharp apex. I personally think that's the most beautiful way to do a dive, but a lot of times you don't have a choice. Those are the two main ways to initiate the dive, I would say. Blast up to the top, flip upside down, blast the gas to stop moving backwards, and then you can start falling. Or you are going up, you're going up, going up. You don't cut the throttle harshly. You don't go boom. You go zhoo. And then it's still soaring, soaring, soaring. As you're soaring, you do a half rotation, half coordinated roll, and then you start pitching slowly. You have not touched the gas at all at this point. You have not touched the gas. It is still soaring, soaring. And then it just starts falling straight down. There's no more movement backwards or forwards. And that means you have timed the move very, very precisely. You've done a really great job of <clears throat> really, really timing where you cut the throttle, how far you're going to soar. You know your quad. You know exactly what it's going to do. And it just shows absolute mastery of your quad and your controls and, and your setup completely, which is what we want, which is what Schizo does and what so many people do that make it look so pretty and so beautiful. So you have the blast to stop, and then you have the just crest over the top and let it fall. Of course, there's a gradient between these two. Those are just the two most extreme ways of doing it. You can do any degree of a little bit of gas to stop the backwards movement, or a whole lot of gas to stop the backwards movement. And then you get to the point of the fall. I can't really show you a video about what I'm going to discuss next because I don't have something tall enough to dive down for it to matter. So what I'm going to be discussing next is, is the actual dive, the actual part where you're falling. And that can be a really big challenge. The best way to do it is, like I said, just crest up to where you want to start falling. Maybe just touch the gas to stop moving backwards and then just let it fall straight down the side of that building or tree, you know, hugging that building one inch off the side of that building, you know, just where you're barely touching the window grates holding the window glass on. That's where we all want to be. We want to be just on the edge. <clears throat> Doing that is a very difficult thing. So a lot of times you will kind of crest at the top and you will kind of misjudge and you'll be too far away or too close and you'll have to get farther away and now you're moving farther away and now you're like, crap, I don't want to be so far away from the building. So you start doing one of these things where you're like, oh, well maybe I can just like tilt all the way and then give it a little gas to get towards the building and then, and then tilt back and it just looks really ugly. Really ugly. <laughs> the only like smooth, reasonable way I think there is to get closer to the object that you're falling is to do those coordinated rolls on the way down to rotate, you know, give it a little gas and then get closer and then rotate back and start falling. This is really, this is, this really comes with experience. You just have to do it a couple times at least until you get the hang of being able to fly down the side of something or just flying downwards because it is a little bit of a challenge. When we do give it a little bit of gas, we move a lot. So you have to really be careful on the gas and just the rotation enough sometimes is, is, is enough. So just the rotation alone is sometimes enough to get you closer to the object or closer to the building. Also, when you're diving into tree canopies or you're, it's a blind dive, you don't know where your exit is and you don't know what it looks like when you blast into the tree canopy, you don't really have a choice but to kind of, you're, when it's completely blind, you're going to soar over the top of the tree, flip upside down, looking for a hole in the tree canopy, and then you have to kind of blip the gas a little bit to stop moving so you can go down into that hole that you've spotted. So like a hawk, you know, really just blasting into that hole. As you go into that hole, 
a lot of times you won't be lined up for the hole, so you have to kind of rotate around and get down through the hole. And you'll see me doing that in, in a lot of my videos, particularly in the video where I, in the holy tree video, where I try to go up through a tree and then back down through a tree, which is really difficult. But you have to rotate in order to keep yourself centered. And that is, that's just an unfortunate reality. If you get it perfect, then you go straight down through and you're really damn good. But it's a hard thing to hit. Then you have the exit to the dive. Now the exit is kind of governed by how you initiated the dive and how you've done the dive and what you're diving down the side of. In this case, I'm gonna be discussing the exit of diving under a tree canopy because I think that's the most common thing that we fly around. And there's a few ways to exit based on how you've set yourself up. If you're diving really, really, really close to that tree or building or whatever you're diving, or not building, particularly tree, it is gonna be really hard to pull out of that dive really smoothly. You have to have perfect timing to pull out of the dive. And the worst thing you could do, the most ugly way to stop a dive, is to just, you know, level out and blast the gas flat. That's not even an easy thing to do. It's it's kind of hard to time it so that you even get to the bottom and just blast it right above the bottom right above the ground. If you're hugging that tree and you're, you know, you're coming down the side of that and you can't even see your exit, you're basically just rotating and hoping you, you can see an exit and then blast the gas and expect to go forward, well, that's, that's kind of trouble. And this is, this is what I talk about when I say I want a linear throttle and I want linear thrust from the, from the props and I want everything, everything to work exactly as my throttle governs. Like I don't want any, any, any surprises. When I give it 20% gas, I want to get 20% gas. I don't want anything else. And with certain props, when you're coming out of a dive like this, you give it gas, the prop, the prop flexes or the motor just can't spin the prop or something happens and you don't get the torque or the power or the punch that you need to stop that fall. And at this point, it's stopping a fall is not really impressive anymore. What we need to do is stop and move forward. So our stuff has become so powerful that stopping alone is, is just not, not good enough. So if you are hugging that tree coming down, you better know your quad and you better know how much power you have in order to just pitch forward the right amount, blast the gas, and go under the object. Not to hit the ground and not to bounce up into the object. That is, that is a pretty difficult thing to do. A much easier way to do it, which is also the way to completely avoid prop wash, is that you're traveling behind, you're a little bit farther away from the tree, you're falling down, you've pitched up, you're kind of sort of flattening out. Here, now you can see the, the pencil. You're kind of sort of flattening out. Move the bottle forward. You're kind of sort of flattening out on the way down, and you're kind of far away from the object, and then you kind of slowly waver the gas, and you're, you're already slowing your descent. In this, if your camera is pointing forward and you're giving it gas, you're, you're, you have a downward vector of thrust, and you're slowing your, your descent already, and it's making it really easy to see where your exit is, exit is and when to give it more gas to exit that, that dive. And that way, by doing that, you're also avoiding a whole lot of potential prop wash because you're not like putting yourself in a whole bunch of prop wash. It's just a little bit, just a little bit of gas. And as you go down, you can either kind of like uh, feather the throttle, like do, 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 to get under the under the canopy. Or if you're really good or, or you know your quad or you have a very linear throttle and you know exactly how much power you're going to get when you give it gas, you slowly start ramping up the gas and you go under the, under the, the tree canopy, which is the most ideal way I personally think to do a dive. So those, between those two kind of exits, you can balance how you do it. Sometimes you need a little bit of 
a little bit of gas to, to slow your descent and then you go under the object because you just don't know when to when you're going to get to the bottom you don't even see the bottom sometimes you're coming down way too sharp you're going to pitch up and just pray to all lord that when you punch the gas you're not going to run into the tree Ugh. and other times you will be just a medium distance away where you still kind of can't spot your exit and you're coming down and you'll just kind of like pump the gas, pump, 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 pump to just get under it so that you're, you're safer. You know you're going to be able to exit because as you pump the gas, you're getting some forward momentum and you're getting a little bit of, of uh, downward vector thrust so that you slow your descent and you can easily, more easily see your exit. And then you have your perfect split S, which is kind of going up, going down, and then slowly, slowly onset of the throttle as you go under the object. Between you and me, writing our history. 